Okay, and we are on for today. And we are talking today about layers and animation. And uh, we covered this uh, during class, but that was a while ago, and I want to make sure we have a refresher course. And uh, now that uh, you've proved to me that you can do uh, basic editing at home, uh, those of you who sent me in the, uh, the uh, practice, practice assignment was good. So let's talk about layering. So this is week two, of course. Let me tap there. Now, layering. What is layering? Now, layering allows you to have more than one piece of video uh, displayed at the same time. So if you want to think of the timeline, let's say we go back here. Now, if you want to think of the timeline, it's going like this. You know, kind of like a railroad train where the boxcars are sort of connected together. Uh, this would be something that builds up. You know, kind of like uh, a three-dimensional boxcar where... You know, kind of like one of those cargo ships where they have all the boxcars stacked on top of each other, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, but the idea is the timeline goes like this. I'm going to look like a priest here. And layers go like this. So that's layering. And uh, video didn't used to be very good at this at all. Now it is incredibly good at it. And I'm not going to bore you with the details of how much things have gotten better since uh, I was in your position, but they have. So, for example, we talked about uh, layering as another dimension, meaning that once again, you know, you've got your, your timeline, and really, the timeline is only in one dimension, then there's a dimension of time. Here, we're allowing you to think of video as being in uh, an upward dimension, where you can put one thing on top of another, on top of another, that sort of thing. And so, that's how that works. Uh, you can stack video, another way of looking at it. And the important thing to understand, and this is uh, the reason why I have to bring this up, is not all editing programs work the same way. The timeline reads from top to bottom. Now, you may think that that's the way everything always is, but there are some editing programs that read from bottom to top. And we used to have one that we used to use. Uh, we don't anymore. You will never see it again, most likely. But the important thing to understand is that whatever timeline, whatever the little... Um, time reader uh, sees directly below itself is going to be seen first. So whatever layer is beneath that layer will be seen next if it's seen at all. So it reads from top to bottom. Now we've mentioned the term upstream and downstream keys. Now if you remember on the midterm exam that came up. So an upstream key uh, is below or behind other keys. So it's actually underneath, which is a little bit confusing, So, because it says up. So if you have an upstream key, believe it or not, that's going to be in the lower layers. A downstream key, which is seen first, is going to be on top or above. Layers can be transparent or opaque, meaning that if you've uh, done the, the practice assignment, uh, you, uh, you would have seen that we can actually stick uh, cutaways or cut-ins on, on, on the layer above the uh, master shot, and then when you play it back, you will see that cut-in uh, above. You will see that cut-in as if it were another shot, because what's happening is that video is being read first, so it's being read in the downstream fashion. Now, if, uh, if you put some video on that has some kind of transparency, you will begin to see the layers below. And you can do that in any number of ways you want. Keying is really the heart of this exercise because it is one of the most amazing things you can do with video. Uh, the word key, uh, I don't actually know where it originated, but I'm going to pretend that I do know. Uh, the keyhole, like, a, like a, a keyhole in a door. If you look at old movies, that's what keys used to look like. They have those long skeleton style keys. And so a house would have a door with that keyhole shape, and then you put the key in and turn it and everything like that. That's how you get in. And so you could look through the keyhole and see what's going on in the house, maybe. And so that's probably where this idea of keying came from. And so keying cuts a hole in a video, and it doesn't really matter where the video is. You know, you can cut a hole in one layer, another layer, another layer. You can have a hole going all the way through five or six layers or 4,000 layers if you've got that much time. Uh, a key cuts a hole into the video. 
And so the idea is that you're creating some sort of a gap that allows the viewer to see through that layer of video. And it doesn't even have to look like a hole, which we'll talk about shortly. The shape of the keyhole can vary. And whatever is behind that layer or the upstream will be visible. And so I, I think we've covered that point pretty well. You can have as many keys as you can imagine. So you can cut all kinds of keys. You can put keys on top of keys. That's how crazy this is. Now, back in the days of tape, I know I said we weren't going to do this, but back in the days of tape, this was a lot harder to do. You were lucky if you can get one key in. And so if you try to do another one, you have to take the video down a generation, so it would make a big mess. So typically, it was highly discouraged to be elaborate with keys, unless you had a great deal of money and had a facility that had all kinds of crazy toys to play with, uh, which cost millions of dollars. Okay, and uh, believe it or not, even before the days of video, we had something like this. And the only reason I know this is because I used to go to an art college, you know, back <laughs> back a long time ago. Uh, but uh, my first film class, I met one of the craziest uh, filmmakers I've ever known. To this day, he's still one of the craziest filmmakers I've ever known. And that was when, back when film was film. You, know, you actually had physical film. And so what he would do, or what some of his colleagues would do, is they would cement film together and, and uh, cut pieces out of it. They put, uh, they put material onto it, and so the film looked like some kind of a collage of garbage. And you could actually project that. And that's what they would do. They would, they would do that was a form of keying, where they were actually using physical film and as long as it can still fit in the projector somehow, they can still do it. I don't know why they'd want to do it, but that's beside the point. Okay, key types. If you are keying, some of the types of keys are as follows. The first, I'm just going to call straight overlay, and that's really no key at all. So, for example, if you're going to do a cut-in or a cutaway in a master shot, and you put something in an upper layer, which is downstream, uh, you're basically blocking off the entire view of whatever is below it. And so that, from the audience's perspective, that just basically becomes part of the video. They don't see that as a key. Now, an alpha channel key uh, is a very useful one. I don't know if we've actually covered exactly what this means. Now, this one, I'm at a loss. I have no idea where the term alpha channel came from. And you know what? I don't really care. Uh, but what it is, uh, is if you're using some kind of a graphics program, and you're putting a graphic onto a video, the graphics program will look at the graphic that you're making and it will design a perfect shape to cut that key so the graphic will magically appear in beautiful uh, resolution over the video. And so it's done automatically. Whatever graphic you're using, it will automatically fit over the video. Uh, that is what's called an alpha channel. Now, uh, it used to be that that was a completely separate piece of video and there was a real headache to create electronically. Uh, but the way it is in, in this situation, it's basically digital. It's, it's, uh, it usually comes with the graphics. And uh, we'll show you some examples of, of how to do this. And it's basically the best, uh, the best keying strategy for graphics. One thing you do have to know is that if you have a graphic that's like a GIF, for example, or a PNG, uh, it has to be 32-bit in order for this to work. 24-bit color does not include an alpha channel. 32-bit color does. Now, a chroma key, this is something that uh, we used to do a whole lot more of in the program. And um, before we got our brand new set, which I still love and I think is a great idea, before we had that, we had that green wall. Uh, and we were doing that. In fact, that's how the... You know, and your ports was set up with the anchor shots. Uh, not a perfect way of doing it. In fact, it's a real hassle, to be honest with you. But it, uh, it does have some incredible abilities. And I do wish that we still had that green wall. We will eventually have it again. Uh, but that is how you do a chroma key. And uh, believe it or not, a chroma keys are not that hard to do. Uh, you can get portable green walls. We have one of those. Uh, you can also use any other color, really. So if you've got a blank wall behind you, for example, which I don't, uh, technically that color there, I could key. That kind of a cream color, whatever you'd want to call that, I could key that. The only problem is it's close enough to skin tone that it might not work. 
So I might want to find a different color wall and it would work. Okay, a luminance key. Uh, that keys anything that's either light or dark. So if you've got something bright, uh, you can key that over something else and whatever in the dark parts of the, of the screen will be ignored. Uh, that is a very iffy way of doing it because uh, if something, if, if a reflection makes that temporarily bright, suddenly that's going to show up. Or if something, um, if some aspect of your, of your key is dark, it may be a hole in it. Generally, they look horrible. And uh, very rarely do those ever really work out. And usually you get to turn the dials to get them just right. And whenever you get to turn the dials to get them just right, it always becomes annoying. A transparency key uh, is basically when you're taking any kind of a key and you're, you're dialing down the, uh, the opacity. And so you're seeing through it partially. So it's kind of like a double exposure in a camera. So you've, uh, you've taken a picture, and instead of advancing the film, you just point the camera at something else and trip the shutter again. And so that same film is exposed twice, and so you see two different images on it. Or in the case of video, you, know, you have two videos playing into a switcher, and then you take the little fader bar and you pull it back halfway so that uh, the two sources are mixed. And you're getting, you're seeing sort of one over the other, kind of a transparent collage type thing. Uh, that's that. There's a place for that, but uh, typically it's not used all that much. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Premiere, and I've created a project here. And right now there's nothing in the project, but what I wanted to do is to demonstrate basic keying and how you can do it. And so we're going to show you a few different examples, and we'll make this short and sweet, but to the point. And I want you to, uh, to think of a way that you can use this in an upcoming project. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to import some video. And I have some stuff here sitting around that I brought in for the demonstration. And I am going to start with something fun. We don't get a chance to play with that this semester, at least I haven't found a way yet. Uh, the drone. So I'm going to take some drone footage. I'm just going to grab this here. I'm just going to drag it into the timeline. See, there it is. And that is drone footage. And so if you see up on the little monitor here, uh, you can see that's when it starts. And then if I hit play here, uh, you can see you know, that's, uh, that's playback. You can even see the scopes. And then the drone takes off. And that's obviously on campus. Now, rather than play all this, I'm going to find a spot. Because uh, this is where we wanted to get that nice shot of the tower coming in. Yeah. Oop. So I'm going to back off there. Let's say I'm going to start there. And so if I play this, you can see that nice reveal of the campus going into the tower. And that'll go on for a few seconds. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am just going to start right there, let's say. And so we'll, we'll start at that point where you can see the campus coming in. And I am just going to go ahead and, uh, and do a chop. And before we go any further, I wanted to plug this little device that I provided you with in the edit suites. And I know you don't have access to those suites now, but this is a really nice thing to have. Because you can see, now I have labeled the buttons that I programmed into it. You've got your jog shuttle control, and it's just an all-around great thing to have. And so in this case, the word cut. Uh, that takes the place of the razor blade. So if you're using one of these, you hit the button. As long as the timeline is active, it'll make the cut. Okay, so let's say I got my jog shuttle control now. I just tap on the timeline. And so you can see I can, I can scroll back and forth. It's moving. You can tell by the numbers. So then I'm just going to hit the cut button. Now notice the cut happens. Then I know I don't need this because there's no way I'm going to watch the original takeoff and some of that other fine-tuning stuff. Then I'm just going to take this, I'm going to right-hand click, ripple delete, and so that will start the video there. Now, it doesn't really matter how much of this I keep, but let's say I don't want to see it after it gets beyond the tower, because that's really pretty much where I was running out of battery power anyway. So let's say I want to keep it up until that point, so I hit the cut button again, that puts a little break there, and I hit the delete button, which uh, I don't have a delete button on there. I've never used that. Uh, so 
There we go. Now, we now have exactly one layer of video here. So, it's a nice, pleasant shot to watch. And so let's say I want to go up here to my video transitions. I want to go to dissolve. And I want to put a nice cross dissolve to begin our little adventure here. So and also I'm going to sort of stretch that out a bit so that we can get a better look at everything that we're doing. And so then if I hit the play button on my remote, I can see the footage. And so that's, that's kind of nice. It's got a nice little thing. It looks like it's... Uh, Sometimes it lags a little bit when you just play it for the first time. Also, you got to remember this computer is working a lot harder. So let's say we're, we're looking at that. Not too bad. We get a nice little view here. Okay, so let's say that we want to put some kind of a graphic there. So the first thing we're going to do is, uh, is find a graphic. Now, there's an easy way to get started. Now, I'm going to show you one. So if I go to File, Import, I'm just going to grab one that's already got some transparency. Now I know for a fact that this graphic is not really going to work all that well, but we're going to try it anyway. So I'm going to drag that over here, and I'm going to stick it right there. Right there. So now if you look at the screen, you can see that little bitty Methodist logo. Now, it's not necessarily bad, but first of all, it's rather small, but we can fix that. So, what you don't see, though, is anything else besides the logo, because all of that is transparent. This literally has an alpha channel. I want to demonstrate that for a minute. So, I'm going to go over to Photoshop, right here, and I'm going to open that very same graph. And there it is. And if I zoom in on it, now first of all, this is a low resolution graphic. I got it off the internet. But you'll notice also there's a checkerboard pattern behind this. That indicates the, uh, the absence of a solid background. So that means that we can key this. So that's the logo. And we can get away with keying it a little bit bigger, I'm sure. So if I'm looking at it there, I'm going to highlight this. Just click on it once, and then you get your controls over here. So under Effects Controls, that's where you want to do this. Uh, there is some obvious ones that you can see here. One of them is Scale. So I'm just going to go ahead and click down on Scale. And I'm just going to drag that up a little bit. And if I do that, now if this graphic is small enough that that doesn't really help. So I can drag it up a little more. And I get Methodist University. Now, let's see what that would look like in context. If I begin playing this... You can see that it will do it. It's not very well. It needs a needs a minute here. Try it again. There it is. Now the obvious problem here is that the words are completely lost. Uh, one word about this real quick. I can stretch this out since it's a still image. I can stretch it out as long as I want. And so that becomes our thing. And so right now that is not helping because you simply can't read the words. So this part of the logo actually does work. So if this were another video that didn't have as much green in it, it would probably stand out a little bit better. But that is an example of a simple alpha channel key. And whoever created this logo created the alpha channel. So if I go back to Photoshop, we can see that that's where that was. Now, I want to try something different. So what I want to do is I'm going to make a new document here. This is a new blank page, and this blank page will be the same dimensions as the video. So if I do an image, image size, I will see that it's 1920 by 1080, which is exactly what it needs to be. And all I'm going to do is come up with some sort of a, uh, uh, just a flashy thing. It doesn't have to be very good at all. So I'm going to go up here to my paintbrush. There's my paintbrush, just a normal paintbrush. And you can see if you paint, you can do all this stuff. And uh, I'm just going to control Z that. What I want to do is I want to make kind of like an art thing. So let's say I go up here and I, I make my paintbrush size really big. And let's say I uh, hardness is about right. If I go here, let's say I just take one of those. Let's see what this does. Okay, it kind of 
it's not really what I want to go with yet, but let's let's try to work with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a different color. So I'm going to choose kind of a kind of a light blue. Ah, too nondescript. So let's go after that again. And let's say more of a deeper blue. Getting there. But pretend for a minute that for some strange reason, that's what we want to do. I'm going to show you a trick. Now, right now, if you look at the background layer, right now there's only one layer in the entire video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock this layer, and then I'm going to duplicate it. Duplicate layer. Okay, now we have two layers. And so then I can get rid of the original background layer. And in this particular case, I can take my magic wand and I can get rid of all of the white space there. So that gives me kind of an ugly little swoop there, but let's pretend for a minute that that's what we want. And I'm just going to go ahead and save this as, and this is going to be in TV demo. Now, if I'm looking at the file formats, if I save that as a BMP, that wouldn't work because what that would do is it would create a background because a BMP is an uncompressed file by and large. And so it's not really going to understand what a transparent background is. So looking at these JPEG, same problem. Now, there are a few examples. A PNG is the one that's the most popular that I know of. PNG will allow you to have a transparent background. GIF does so also, but I generally go with PNG. And so let's say we do that, and I'm going to call this swoop. That's all it's going to be. So if I save that, and I'm just going to go hit and click OK. Then if I go back here, let's see what happens if I import that. So I'm going to go up and import, file, import, and there's my swoop. So if I take it in and I drag it anywhere on here, let's see what that does. And you can see it looks ugly as thing. But it does prove that you can create a graphic. Now, I'm going to go back here for a minute and try it one other way. So let's eliminate this piece of junk. So I'm just going to draw a box around it and just basically blow it away, hit the delete button. So now we've got no background at all. We've literally got just the checkerboard there. And let's say I try this again. That will have no white residue. And if I save as and uh, go back to PNG, and we're just going to call that one Swoop 2. How about that? Swoop 2. So if I save Swoop 2, and uh, computer may think about that for a minute because i got a lot of things open. So now let's see what we got. So if I go back to my Premiere, and I import, and this will be Swoop 2. Let's see what Swoop 2 looks like. Swoop 2 looks a little better because you see that we're getting that alpha channel done more exactly because we don't have the white in the first place. So the reason I'm showing you both ways, every once in a while this works. Sometimes that's the easier way to do something. You can't do it any other way. Uh, but sometimes you can, you can get away with more. You can paint on these things. You can do little illustrations and stuff. Uh, but right now, you know, that's, that's good enough for, for that demonstration. Now, I want to also show you that there are even better ways of doing this. So, let's say we go to a 3D drawing program. Now, while you don't necessarily have access to these, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I just want you to be aware that they do exist. So, if I go, for example, to LightWave, and here I can create something. And so, 
I'm going to create a logo, which is just going to be text. I'm going to call this Campus Highlight. And I'm going to choose a nice font. So I'm going to go ahead and choose, uh, let's go with something, something simple. I'm going to choose Arial because I know that some of these fonts can be, can be rather problematic. So I'm just going to choose the simplest one I can. And then, as you can see, we've got a 3D graphic called Campus Highlights. And you can see, and this is a, it's a 3D graphic. And I'm going to give it two surfaces because I want to. And so if I go into polygon mode, that means that I am accessing only the, uh, the completed filled shapes, for example, the letters. And I'm just going to call that face. And let's say face. I feel like making that blue today. And that's the extent of it. Okay, so if I were then to save this, I'm going to save object. And I'm going to call that highlights. And then I'm going to open that in my studio here. And so there it is. Now, from the point of view of the camera, because the camera, in this context, is what sees this. And this is how a lot of these graphics programs work. So if I look at the camera, and I can even move the camera in a little bit. So let's say that's what we want. And I'm also going to, to choose. I'm going to move that. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And let's say I want something like that. Doesn't that be perfect? Move. So there, the important thing is it's three-dimensional. So then I'm going to go to my camera properties. I'm going to make that 1920 by 1080. And then I'm just going to tell the computer to render it as is because we can spend a lot more time on this, but we're not going to. And that's literally it. So I'm going to save this as a PNG 32. Remember, it's got to be 32, otherwise it won't work. I'm going to call this Highlights Image. So then, if I go back to Premiere, and I import this. I can find highlights image there. And if I dump that onto the timeline, you can see, there we go. And it's cut out that nice, clean shape. Okay, there's also another type of key I wanted to make sure we talked about. Uh, and that is a chroma key, which again is something that we haven't gotten a chance to, to play around with as much as we used to. So I just happen to have some chroma key footage, and uh, I hope this gentleman won't mind who was, uh, who was doing a project with us uh, last year, I believe it was. So actually a couple of years ago. So I'm going to import that file, and this person is uh, in front of a green screen, and so if I put him there, you will see that the background that he is standing in front of is obviously green. Now, the reason why green was chosen is because people don't have a lot of green in their faces. And so unless you wear green, uh, typically that's going to be the a very consistent color that you can find. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the computer to cut out all the green. So if I do that, I'm going to go over here to uh, close transitions. I'm going to go straight to video effects. 
and I'm going to go to keying. And we got a lot of baggage here, a lot of older key programs. I'm going to go right to ultra key because ultra key is the one that I want. I'm just going to drag ultra key down on, onto this. And so now, if I go to effects controls for this clip, I highlight that, you will see ultra key is there. And so here, we have this little black thing because apparently it doesn't know automatically that that's what you want to do. I'm going to grab the eyedropper and I'm going to click there. And what that does is it eliminates anything that's green. And usually at this point, I'm going to, uh, under setting, I'm going to go to with aggressive because every once in a while, you know, chroma keys break down. And so let's see what's going on. If I play some of this, My name is Gary Rogers. I'm with the Deeply Media Group. I am a proud member of the Greater Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce Ambassadors. I'm a proud member of the Chamber Board and Executive Okay, that's close enough. So I'm just going to eliminate the stuff that happens before and after he says something. And so if we wanted to use this, we could uh, go ahead and go back to video transitions. I always close these windows if I'm not going to use them right away. And I'm just going to put a cross dissolve in and a cross dissolve out. And let's say this was part of our video. Uh, my name is Gary Rogers. I'm with the Easley Media Group. I am a proud member of the Greater Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce Ambassadors. I'm a proud member of the Chamber Board and Executive Board. Okay, so there's your chroma key. Now, while we're here, let's pretend that uh, there's something wrong with me and I want to uh, to do a transparency key. Let's say I want to make him less opaque. Uh, that is very easy to do. Uh, over here in the effects controls, let's say I close ultra key even though it's still working. By the way, you can you can turn these keys off by hitting this little effects button. So if you want to see what it was like without them, you can do that. But in this case, we're looking at opacity. If I were to take my opacity and I were to drag this back a little bit, I can make what's left of him kind of vanish. And so I can have a semi-transparent video playing that's already key. Gary Rogers, I'm with so if that's what you want to do, you can do it. And so I don't necessarily recommend that you, uh, you do something like that. Uh, but... Let's understand what is happening here. We're literally telling the computer to play two different streams of video at the same time, and one we're asking it to, um, to make it partially transparent, so it's got to calculate all of that, and we're telling it to ignore green, and it's still doing it. Now, let's say that your computer is not as good as, as this one, or let's say that, uh, that you're, you're asking it to do something that's a little bit more than it was designed to do. You can still do it. You just have to render it. And so... Even if it takes a year to render, it's still going to render. So even if you had a computer that was the equivalent of something from the 1960s, you could still do it if you had enough time, even if you had to outlive the universe to do it, because it's still a matter of calculations. Okay, so those are keys. Now, animation is something that's important to talk about in this context, because it can add a whole other dimension to this. And the thing to understand is that basically anything can have a timeline. A timeline is simply a chain of events that happens over time, and everything is synchronized to hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And so you're 30 frames a second, or 25 frames a second, or whatever. Uh, you, you, can, you can set that any way you want, as long as it's consistent. But the timeline will go along using frames. Every layer and every effect can have a timeline. The stopwatch is magic. That's how you access the timelines. That's how you create the key frames that tell the animation what to do. Keys can move in all three directions. And so you can have keys that have to do with animation. You can have keys that have to do with, with uh, whether something is, is opaque or not, or whether some color change is happening, all of those things. Videos can be, can be keyed as well as still images and graphics. And so pretty much it's almost completely unlimited. 
and it can get surreal very quickly, meaning that if you want to create something that is, uh, that is really, really mind-blowing, uh, you can. You, you can if you want to. If that's your goal, you can do it. Okay, so we're, we're back here again. And so here's an idea. Let's go back to this key, which we know doesn't really work all that well, but we're, we're going to pretend that it does anyway. So I'm going to click on this. And so here is my position and my scale and things like that. And I haven't really got anything going there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it move onto the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to position the playhead right around where that begins, just for my own reference. And you see where it says position, I'm going to hit the stopwatch. Now the moment I do that, I get this other window here. I'm going to try to make that a little bit more visible. And so you can barely see it. There's a little bitty tiny dime, little tiny diamond there. I'm going to take myself out of the picture here. Oop, there I go. So you can see this little bitty tiny diamond. That is a keyframe. So the keyframe begins at the beginning. And so at the beginning, I want, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to move this literally off the screen. So then I'm going to move the playhead. doesn't matter which playhead I use. I can use this one now. And let's say by that point, I want it to be on the screen. So I just drag that over like that. Now look, look what happens. If I move the playhead, it does that. So that is an animation. Now, I've decided that I would rather that happen more quickly. I'm going to grab that keyframe and move it back some. Let's see how that works. There we go. How about that? I could even move it more quickly. I just move that back a little bit more. And there it goes. Still doesn't help some of the other problems, but it gets us started. Now, we can also, I'm going to turn on scale. So scale now has a keyframe. It's going to put the keyframe where, where I am. So right now, that keyframe is OK. So I'm going to go here, and I want to take scale upwards. We can even smooth these out a little bit. So there's your, and you can control how that works. I'm also going to go over to opacity, and I'm going to uh, find my opacity thing here. You have to scroll down here. Oh, there it is. So opacity already seems to have a stopwatch on it. So at this point, I'm going to fade it out. So. And at this point, I'm going to fade it in. So after all that work, oh, it's faded out. If I would prefer that it be active a little longer, I can move that keyframe ahead so we can see it come in, and then it fades out. So that is an example of how you can uh, put a little animation work in here. Anytime you see a, see a stopwatch, it doesn't matter what it is, you can do it. And so you can have all kinds of crazy things happening in your timeline, if that's what you want to do. So rather than you know, belabor the point, I think we get the idea of what's possible using uh, timelines and uh, layered effects. And hopefully that will get you started when it comes to uh, doing some nice layered graphics and, uh, and keys.